in this section, we're going to talk about health checks and how they relate to the new service types or new resource record types available on the Big IP in version 12.0. We're gonna start with looking at it by, or we're going to illustrate this by looking at an example of health status requirements. And we're gonna have an example wide IP and pool that we're looking at and showing the different scenarios um, for of availability and how that will affect the um, health of a particular wide IP. So an MX pool member um, must match an A or a quad A wide IP. That's that is per the RFC for the for um, MX records. They need to to match a fully qualified domain name. And in our case, we're just putting other wide IPs in the pool. And the other thing we need to know about it is it can be just one resource record type or both resource record types on the big IP. So what I'm saying is an MX pool can have, <clears throat> one pool can have A records and another pool can have quad A records. And the, both those wide IPs can be referenced within the MX pool. So if two pools are configured, either wide IP or both wide IPs in the pool can be red or green. So the, their pool statuses are independent of each other. So you can get into scenarios where one is available and the other is not. The availability of the wide IP that's fronting both of these pools is the best availability of all pools associated um, with that wide IP. So the same availability concept applies to our NAPTER, SRV, and CNAME records also because those have names um, within them and if any of any wide IP with the name is available, then that is going to show up as green. And what you can get into are some situations where you have mixed pools of A and quad A and some of the availability can make the responses not necessarily be what you want them to be. So if you have minimal response disabled on the MX wide IP, a reply may contain both A and quad A records in the additional section. It may only contain A records or only contain quad A records or no MX records if all A and quad A wide IPs in the pool are red. So let's take this a little further and, take, and look at some examples of, of different statuses. So in this case, we have our wide IP, which is an MX, um, which is an MX type. It has a pool. It has mail01.example.com and mail02.example.com configured as pool members within that MX pool. And we can see in this, this scenario that mail01.example.com, the topmost one is red because all of the virtual servers associated with the pool on that wide IP are down. And we can see that mail02.example.com is a quad A wide IP and it is available. So our status for this for the MX wide IP is available because one of its pools is available. However, when it goes to respond, it's only going to return IPv6 addresses because all because the pool members that are um, A records that contain A record wide IPs are down. So in this case, the, the customer may configure it this way and get into a situation where they're not getting all of the um, the wide IP responses or all of the, the named responses that they want for MX records. Um, the converse is true or the flip side is true that if we have our same configuration and the quad A wide IP um, that is in the pool is down, the whip is still going to show us, the MX whip is still going to show as available, but we're only going to get IP4 v4 addresses returned in this particular case. And then we have the situation where both pools are down, the wide IP A and wide IP quad A, so mail01 and mail02 wide IPs are completely down based off of the health checks that are being done um, at the pool level. And in this case, wide IP, the MX wide IP is going to show up as unavailable. And you can see down here that the status return is the status serve, server um, fail. Now, remember that you have the ability, and what I've done in this particular example is you have the ability on that wide IP to set the return code on failure. And in this case, I've enabled um, that response and I've told it to, to return a server failure um, if, all, if the wide IP is unavailable. So that's the reason we see that server fail in this particular case. I, I actually configured that on the wide IP. Now let's take a look at this example. In this example, our wide IP is still available, but in this case, I have both mail01 A record, wide IP, A wide IP, and the mail01 um, quad wide IP. And in this case, since the A records are down, I'm going to still get mail01.example.com return, and I'm only going to get IPv6 addresses returned to that. 
This, this shows an example of the new wide IP types that we have that have, um, for example, the MX record, the SRV, the NAPTA records. And you can get into some confusing situations about what you're returning and not returning based on the health of different things. Um, so you need to be really clear how you configure things so there's less confusion as to what's going to be returned and what is what needs to be available. The final thing we're going to talk about are CNAME wide IPs or a wide IP that has a CNAME pool associated with it. So a CNAME pool contains wide IP names just like our MX records, our NAPTA records, and our SRV. But the distinct thing about CNAME pools is their pool members can be any wide IPs with matching names. So they can front end any wide IP type that could be, behind, that could be a member of the pool. So the availability of the CNAME pool is based upon the availability of the six other types that may have wide IPs defined with the name that's contained in the CNAME pool. So you can see down at the bottom here, I have a wide IP with a CNAME example.com. And if we start at the top, going down through all of these, if any of these are configured in green, then this wide IP is going to be green because the CNAME pool doesn't make a distinction as to what type it's pointing at, what resource record type. It is just looking at the name that it has, in this case, example.com, and looking at any of the wide IPs available uh, with that name. And if any of them are green, it is going to be green. So that's one important thing to remember about CNAME pools is they front end any wide IP with a name contained in them. If it's green, pool and that whip is going to be green. One other thing to note is CNAME static target members are always green. Those are off of um, those are located off the big IP. Um, we're not doing any health checks on them, so they're going to show up as green always. Um, and the other thing to note is the member state stands alone. So that's saying that it's not based on which wide IP wide IPs use its parent pool. So different wide IPs can use the same pool, and an individual member can have only one state. So that means that pool member state may be referenced by multiple wide IPs, but its pool state will always, there's, there's only one state for it. So in this case, the CNA pool could be used by several different, by several different wide IPs, but it's always going to go back and look at the, the pool to see what the actual status is.